we came across what the project was called App Cloud at the time, and this project eventually became what's known as Cloud Foundry today, which is a open source platform as a service. But at the time, it didn't start as an open source platform as a service. We thought it would be a, a platform. We wanted to be an application platform, but we didn't know how to sell it. I remember we're sitting in a, in a product review with Paul Moritz, me, Derek, and the team, and we went through the engineering roadmap, the product update, and the business plan, and how to bring this to market. And I think it was Derek who first thought of this term or this option, and I think Mark Lukowski uh, coined it the nuclear option, and that was the open source cloud foundry. So at the end of this meeting, Paul looks at me, looks at Mark, looks at Derek Medim, says, tell me more about this, this nuclear option, about open sourcing Cloud Foundry. What does it entail? Legally, technically, go to market wise. And he said, you don't have three months to figure this out. You have two weeks. Imagine the effort it took me to go around a company that just went public a couple years ago, selling proprietary software to convince all the other executives that, hey, you know this thing we've been working on for the past year, this super secret project? We're going to open source it and give away for free. But the, the idea of open sourcing Cloud Foundry was maybe the nuclear option because we would move the economic value not just down to the virtualization platform, but would share the economic value with a, with a bigger ecosystem of players. And again, hoping that by sharing in this community, the core virtualization platform would benefit and then our partners would benefit. The insight around launching Cloud Foundry as an open source project is really threefold. The first is winning developers and what I call DDR, developer defined infrastructure. The idea of an open source project is you get more developers that accrues value to the platform because they make it better. They have a vested interest in making Cloud Foundry and your open source project succeed. The second part of the open source strategy is really partnerships. So not only do you win the developers and the engineers, you have an ecosystem of companies and technologies and at the time cloud providers that have a vested interest in your success. And the third part around open sourcing Cloud Foundry is with open source projects, there tend to be a first mover advantage or a winner take most in terms of if you're out there first, you get the developer adoption first, you get the ecosystem around you, you really have a, a platform because all of a sudden the developers, the companies, the extended ecosystem have a vested interest in making sure your open source project, their open source project is successful. So there's a lot of perceptions around open source and business models, um, rightfully or wrongfully. Open source is a powerful tool if, if used by entrepreneurs and executives correctly. And now, as you can see with, with the industry, everyone's embracing open source. First and foremost, open source gets you adoption by developers and by enterprises. It's a way for you to reduce cost of awareness, the cost of selling. Because developers will find your technologies, they'll find your product. It could be everything from uh, a version of Linux, a Cloud Foundry, a new language, a new runtime, a new database, a new container technology like Docker. They're going to find your technology if it has merit and they'll start adopting it. And so you really have this um, grassroots adoption bottoms up inside the enterprise. And increasingly with this generation of developer-defined infrastructure, we're seeing developers make the decisions of what technologies they're going to use to build the product, to build an application, or to build out their clouds. I started making the rounds with the sales executives, the other product executives, talk about Cloud Foundry being open source. And you had the range from... Uh, Bunch of product folks and engineers loving the idea, understanding that open source as a go-to-market technology and, and, and strategy made sense. And then after going through all those reviews, it, it became clear we had to do the strategy. One of the hardest things to do as an entrepreneur or executive, and one of the hardest things I had to do in my career, is to create a new category, to create a new platform. Because it's a, it's a big rock to push up the hill because you're motivating not just yourself, but also an, an ecosystem of partners that are outside your control. So with Cloud Foundry, we're successful in creating what we call at the time this open pass or open platform as a service. And it really paved the way, in my mind, for uh, this next generation of developer infrastructure from companies like Docker or Mesos or open source projects from companies like Google. And you've seen the entire industry, especially in the infrastructure world, storage, networking, security, compute, really embrace a lot of the ideas that I feel like we, we first pioneered or first discovered at 
VMware and Cloud Foundry. It's a harder lift, but if you're successful, you're not just creating value for yourself, but for entire ecosystem of partners, companies, and, and engineers, developers, and employees.